Christianity Today, one of the premier evangelical publications in America, continues to stand by its editorial last week, calling for Trump's removal from office due to his, quote, profoundly immoral behavior. Yesterday, after suffering a barrage of criticism from the president and his supporters, Christianity Today reaffirmed its stance on the president's fitness for office, writing, we hold fast to our view that the wholehearted evangelical embrace of Trump has been enormously costly. Meanwhile, evangelicals who support Trump have been very vocally critical of the publication. The Christian Post yesterday published a list of some 200 Christian leaders condemning Christianity Today's call for Trump's removal. The list includes people like Ralph Reed, Jerry Falwell Jr., and former Congresswoman Michelle Bachman. All of this has triggered a pretty fascinating conversation about the relationship between the white evangelical Christian movement and the president of the United States. Joining me now is someone who's thought a lot about Christian theology and politics, Reverend William Barber, evangelical pastor and coalition leader of the Poor People's Campaign. Reverend, I'm, I'm curious what you made of the, uh, of the editorial itself. Well, first, Chris, um, you know, when you think about Christian moral critique and a viewpoint, racist voter suppression, racist attack on Latinos, taking people's health care, refusing to address poverty— are all violations of Christian morality, are all sinful, and are all the wrong direction for a nation. So when Christianity Today says that whatever the benefits of Trump's presidency, they must stand against his immorality, it kind of reinforces this distorted moral narrative that you focus on the person and not the policies. And, and I'm, I mean, I can actually celebrate as an evangelical that Christian Daniel today took the stand. I understand the office getting all kinds of, of mean-spirited hate and whatnot. But it's troubling because to suggest that the immorality of Donald Trump as a, is just personal is kind of a dangerous focus on personal piety and not public policy, which is actually the focus of the script. It's almost like saying if he was just a nicer guy. Right. then his policies would meet the standard of Christian morality. And that in itself is very problematic. But that, but that part of that, that comes down to a, a deeply contested question in American life, right, between people of different religions and particularly within the Christian tradition, within the Christian evangelical mm -hmm. tradition, along lots of different lines about, you know, <laughs> what is essentially biblical policy or what is morally uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, defensible policy. And obviously, white evangelical Christians in this country have focused a lot on abortion, a lot on judges, and not that much on many of the issues you just talked about. Well, in many, and in many ways, they say a lot about what God says so little and so little about what God says so much. It was one of the reasons we're having a mass poor people's assembly and a moral march on Washington uh, in June to challenge this kind of uh, more, this kind of limited morality, because it's just not Chris, biblical. Now, there may be a lot of discussion, but when you go to the Bible, we're in the Christmas season, for instance. In we Isaiah are. 9, the Christmas season says, and the government shall be upon his shoulders and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding with justice and righteousness. The next, the next verse in Isaiah 11 says, but with righteousness, he will judge the needy and with justice, he will give decisions for the poor. And when Jesus started his ministry, he said, Luke chapter four, he said, God, the gospel is about good news to the poor, the broken, the sick, the imprisoned, the unaccepted. So you can argue that the things they talk about are the main issues, but they're not the main issues in scripture. They're not the main issues in the mouth of Jesus. It's more of, of a political decision funded by a lot of money to try to uh. use religion to, to consecrate and, and to a lot of injustice and not to critique the real injustices and the social injustices of our society. Even, Chris, even joy to the world says he rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the light, the light of his righteousness or his justice. We need to have, I am glad, if, if this is what it took, we need to have this conversation, just like the abolitionists had the conversation over against the slaveholders, and just like the civil rights movement had the a conversation over against those who purported Jim Crow and tried to use Christianity to support Jim Crow. Um, do you think there are people who are persuadable, I, 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 given how I polarized really things are? Yeah. I, I really do. I'm meeting them all over. You know, we're on this. We must do more mobilizing, organizing, registering, educating voters, people for the movement who vote leading to June 20th, 2020, this mass poor people's assembly. And in the back hills of Kentucky and down in Alabama and Mississippi, we are finding a lot of people 
who have decided to read their Bibles, not just listen to read and listen to fall well, and really read what the gospel says. And they know something is deeply troubling. It's something deeply troubling, they are saying, when somebody can say they're for, uh, against abortion, but they're for taking health care once people get here. You know, they're, they're, they're for tax cuts for the wealthy, but they're against living wages here when the Bible clearly instructs us to pay the laborer his hire. You know, they're for the, the capital being in Jerusalem, but they're not for dealing with the poverty and the problem of capital among the poor here in this country. I do believe, and I'm meeting people all over, white and black, many who identify themselves as evangelical, but they stopped doing it because the way the evangelical hmm, title had been and hijacked, and we must recover it and take it back. Yeah, that's part of the, uh, one of the la last parts of that editorial. In fact, Reverend William Barber, thanks so much for making time tonight. Merry Christmas. Thank you so much. God bless you. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.